Bien, no chime. Welcome to season two, episode four of the Learn Nahuatl channel series. Just a reminder that I do have a book available that is going to cover a lot of the things we're going to talk about in all in our series, which you can use to follow along. But also, it has more examples and answer keys. Said more than anything, uh, one new thing that you'll get there is a uh, answer key there. And lots of exercises for you to try. So that's something you can get on Amazon. And today we're going to focus on the word tepostli for vocabulary. We're going to see vocabulary words that have tepostli in there. And we're going to practice how to say, to say. Let's get started with the word tepostli. Tepostli refers really to any kind of metal thing. It could be metal, it can be copper. And by extension, anything like a machine, uh, any kind of robot, machine, um, kind of apparatus thing that is based off of metal, they're all called tepostli. And to be short, you can call your computer tepostli. You can call your cell phone tepostli. So you'll see this word in a lot of these different things. <clears throat> Teposcawayo, remember, it loses the tli at the end when we're putting into uh we're combining it with something else. So the post, the first one is the one that's uh, going to modify the real words. So the real word here is caballo, which is horse, caballo. By putting tepos in front of it, we're saying metal horse, metallic horse. So this is a metallic horse, tepos caballo. There is a certain o order for how we put this. We wouldn't say caballo tepostle. Okay, that would be a horse-like metal. But if it's a metal-like horse, it's tepos caballo. Tepos totot. Okay, you can kind of figure out where this word comes from. What are the two parts it has? Tepostle and totot. Tepos totot. Tepos tlahquiloli. Tlahquiloli is something written, something that you write. So tepos tlahquiloli would be any kind of metal thing you used um, to write with. For example, a computer, a keyboard, a typewriter. These would all be tepos tlahquiloli. Tepos kwamekatl. Okay, so kwamekatl refers to a type of uh, a lasso kind of thing, like a metallic lasso, almost like a chain. But really, it's referring to the fact that the it's got all these wires inside of it. So this object that has all these wires is teposquamecatl. So that's a word for phone. There isn't one particular word for phone. There's different words you can make up depending on where you're at, the variety, and, and just how people in that particular town invented it. Another word here is teposanili, which is metal thing for talking with. Sanili is a spoken word. Conversation. Jokes, stories, okay? So, tepos sanili is metal talking thing. Okay, and that's it for tepostli. Uh, put the tepos in front of anything that's metal, okay? So, tepos, if you have a metal table, tepos mesa, metal door, tepos puerta, okay? So, it's just a, a, a prefix you can put onto a lot of things. Okay, so now let's look at nech. Nech means that something happens towards me. Okay, so we have the word paktia, which means to cause happiness in someone. Okay, to cause happiness in someone. And if I put nech there, it means something is causing me happiness. That's that nech. So something's causing me happiness. That's what that literally means. Something brings me, makes me happy. And what is it that makes me happy? It says... Nechpaktia nomiston. Nomiston, my cat. So in other words, my cat makes me happy. Literally what it means. Some Most varieties would, when you actually translate it, this is one way of saying, I like. I like. So nechpaktia is some, something makes me happy. That's how you say this word. You could say nechpaktia misli. I like cats. Um, that'd be wild cats. Nechpaktia miston. I like small cats. Nechpaktia chichime. Okay, I like dogs. Dogs make me happy. So 
So that's that's one way of uh, using paktia here. <clears throat> um, it could be an action you do. So I like to do something. Okay, so I'd say nech paktia, which we're saying again, it something makes me happy. Niktlachilis. Niktlachilis means I watch something. So in other words, I like to I watch something. This is how we say it in Nahuatl. Nechpaktia niktlachilis televisión. I like to watch TV. Nechpaktia niktlachilis televisión. So again, this is something happens to me. If I want to say, you make me happy, you cause happiness in me, it'd be ti, because you're the one doing the action. Nech is next. I'm the one receiving the action. Ti nech paktia. All together, ti nech paktia. Means you make me happy. You can't say ni nech paktia. Okay, to, to say, um, you know, I can make my, I, I'm happy myself. That's not how you would say it. So you cannot put ni and nech together. If you're doing something to yourself. If you're doing something to yourself, we need mo. The particle mo. Not nech. <clears throat> I can ask ti nech neki? Ti nech neki? Tlenkitos neki. What does that mean? We've seen neki a few times before. Ti nech neki. So neki, remember, means to want or love something. So this is the question. Do you love me or do you want me? Ti nech neki? Okay, so it could be something um, amorous. It could also be just uh, someone was looking for someone. Say, oh, were you looking for me? Did you want me? Right? Did you need me? Because this is also to need something. So if I put mo, which is that reflexive thing with neki, it means it wants itself. In other words, it is necessary. It is necessary. So mo neki. It is necessary. So this is how we say you need to do something, right? Moneki or it's necessary. It's very common. You hear this word a lot. So this is why I bring it up. I could say um, moneki ni momachtis, which means it's necessary that I study. Okay, so that's saying I need to study. In other words, I need to study. How about uh, if I want to say I need to see it. I need to see it, right? Moneki Nikitas. It's necessary that I see it. Moneki Nikitas. Moneki Nikochis. Moneki Nikochis. I need to sleep. Moneki Nikochis. Kena Moneki means yes, it is necessary. Kena Moneki. Now there are some examples of Moneki. In the Huasteca, we have another way to say to like something, which is amati. Amati. Amati means to like something. Baktia also means to like something. So there's two ways of saying that you like something in the Huasteca. The most common one that other varieties say is baktia, and the Huasteca particular one, which is amati. But the way you use them is a little bit different. Okay, so if I say, um, <clears throat> if I say I like something with baktia, I'm going to say nech baktia. But if I say I like something and I'm using amati, I'm going to say nik amati. I'm not saying the nech anymore, I'm using nik. So what gives? When do I say ni versus nech? And this caused me, even myself, a little bit of confusion back when I, I remember when I started first learning Nahuatl. Um, Confusion between do I say nik pakti or nech pakti? Do I say nech amati or nik amati? Okay, so to figure out this problem, we have to start with the root of the word. What does it literally mean? Amati means for you to like something. Whereas pakti means for something to bring happiness to someone. For something to make someone happy. So if I say nik bhakti, I'm saying I make it happy. I make him happy or I make her happy. Whereas amati, if you start with how the root of it, it means 
to like something. So if I say Nick Amati, it just means I like it. I like him, I like her. Could be any of those. So with Amati, you're gonna say Nick, because I'm the one doing the action to it. But if I say net, but if I say paktia, I'm gonna say nech, because something else is causing me that happiness. Okay, so these are fundamental differences in how these words were kind of born, the dictionary form. <clears throat> if I say nik paktia, that means I make him happy or I make her happy. If I say nech amati, that means he likes me or she likes me. Okay, so. Um, Something to keep in mind. Paktia versus amati. I could say nech kokoa, which means something hurts me. And the reason I'm saying nech and not nik is because this thing is the one that's causing pain to me. So that's why I'm going to say nech, because it's causing pain towards me. And kokoa means to cause pain to someone. So nech kokoa no ihti, my stomach hurts. Nechkokoa no tsontekon, my head hurts. Nechkokoa no ishtiyol, my eye hurts. Okay, so this is how we say kokoa, for you to, something to hurt you. As an example, nechkokoa no ma. Nechkokoa no ikshi. I gave this one away a little bit ago, but how would you say my head hurts? Being that my head is notzontekon and it hurts me would be nechkokoa. So it's almost like your head's betraying you. Your head is the one that's hurting you. What does this mean? Nechita. Nechita. Clue, take a look at that H at the end. That means it's plural. The ones who are doing this action is more than one. But I know nech is towards me and ita we've seen over and over is to see. So nech ita would mean they see me. They see me. Not he sees me, but they see me. <clears throat> now if I put nech ita without that H at the end, now it does mean he sees me or she sees me, just one person. Amo nechkaki no welti. Amo nechkaki no welti. Kaki means to hear someone, to hear someone. So if I say nechkaki, it means someone hears me. Amo nechkaki is means someone doesn't hear me. And no welti is my sister. So amo nechkaki no welti, which means my sister doesn't hear me. My sister doesn't hear me. Okay, my sister can't hear me. Now, there's a, if you want to say my sister's not listening to me, like she's not paying attention to me, that's kakilia. That's another word. You'd say amo nech kakilia. Nech kaki no nana. Nech kaki no nana. This is in the past tense. That's why it has ki at the end. Okay, so since it has ki at the end, I know this is class two. The word and the root word is kawa, kawa, to leave something, to leave someone. So nechkawa means someone leaves me. Nechkaki means someone left me. So this girl saying my mom left me. Nechkaki no nana. Okay, and to the third part of this video, the third mini lesson here is let's talk about different ways of saying to talk. And actually there's several ways to say to talk, converse, right? We have a lot of these different words, even in English, to say something to someone. And here's the big ones. The big ones to, I want you all to take away from today is the difference between I say something and I tell someone something. So to tell someone something it's going to be a different word from to say something. Okay, so the root difference is going to be the root ihtoa, which means to say something. 
So when I say ichtoa, I'm focusing on something that I'm saying, the words. Okay? So I would say nikichtoa. That means I say it. Nikichtoa. Like, for example, I'm going to say, I say yes. I say yes. Nikichtoa kena. I say no. Nikichtoa amo. So when I say nikichtoa, I'm focusing on what are my words. Nikichtoa. I say it. Now, if I say ichlia, then I'm saying I tell someone. Now I'm focusing on the person that I'm saying something to. So, nikichlia no nana. I tell my mom. I tell my mom something. I, told my, I, I tell my mom hello. Nikichlia no nana piyali. Nikichlia no nana piyali. That's the main takeaway I want you to all take, get from uh, this slide right here. Ichtoa, to say something. Ichlia, to tell something, to tell someone something. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> so that's what that means, okay? So, don't mix up ichtoa and ichlia. Okay, so if I told my mom something, I'm not going to say nikichtoa. Because there, I'm, if that means I said my mom. But we're trying to say, I told my mom. So, luckily, even English has this distinction between say and tell. So, remember that for ichtoa and ichlia. Now, if I say stuff, in general, I'm going to say, nitla ichtoa. And usually, we fuse that together and say, nitlahtoa. Nitlahtoa. So, you'll hear the word, you've heard the, you've probably heard the word tlahtoani. Right, the ruler, the speaker, the main person in charge of the empires or any city, kind of like your chief, is a tlahtoani, the speaker, basically the representative who's allowed to speak on behalf of the, the government there. So tlahtoa, important word. You see this so much in other varieties. They say ni tlahtoa nawat, for example. I speak nawat. Because you're literally saying I say stuff in nawat. And that means I speak. Ni tlahtoa, I speak. In the Huasteca, people don't really say ni tlahtoa nahuatl, but you will say it and they understand what you mean because it, it's grammatically correct to say that. Um, kind of slang, if someone says tlahtoa, they can kind of imply that they're saying, oh, they speak Spanish. So if they're saying, oh yeah, they speak, they usually mean, they, can, they often mean, oh yeah, they speak Spanish. Okay, so... A little bit of context there. But a lot of varieties, you'll hear people say ni tlahtoa nahuatl, so you can specify what you're saying. The Huasteca, ha, though, is fun and has three other ways of saying I speak or I talk or converse. They all mean the same thing. Around Chicontepec, Veracruz, where I'm focusing on, uh, the most common way to say I speak is saniloa. Saniloa. Ni saniloa nahuatl. Okay, that means I speak in Nahuatl. You can also say Kamati. Okay, Kamati, Kamati. Okay, this is different from uh, Amati that we saw in the last uh, slide. So don't confuse Nikamati, which means I like it, and Nikamati, which means I speak. <clears throat> And actually, when you say nikamati with a little h, um, that actually means this kamati. And if, okay, so that's, that's just a small difference. If I say nikamati with that a little h in my k sound, then I'm saying I like it. And if I say nikamati with a little h there, kind of like when we say h is in English a lot. Like when Americans say taco. There's a little H sound in there. Taco. Ka, um, call. Right? It's not call, 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 call. But call. It's a little H. So put a little H, and that's going to emphasize that you're saying, I speak. Nikamati. Nikamati. Okay. And the last one means, I use Nahuatl, which means I speak Nahuatl. And that's the word, Nahuati. Nahuati. To use Nahuatl or to speak Nahuatl. 
So if I can, I can say Ninawati, means I speak Nahuatl. Okay, so all those uh, are different ways of saying to speak something, to say something. Now the opposite one I was saying is Ixlia. And you can pronounce it in both ways. You could say Ixlia or Ixwia with little W there. It makes no difference. Native speakers understand both. Okay, Nikilia, I tell him. Nikilwia, I tell him. Same thing. Same thing. One more interesting thing here you can say is Nimo Ichlia. And this mo means I do it to myself. It's a reflexive. So how can I tell myself something? Well, if you say that, you're actually saying, I think. I think. Nimo Ichlia, like my opinion. Nimo Ichlia. So something that you think is something that you tell yourself. Nimo Ichlia. <clears throat> okay, so let's try and make some sen sentences. Try to say, I speak English. How would you say this? So we can say, use the word ni tlahtoa or ni saniloa. Let's start with tlahtoa. Ni tlahtoa ingles. That's it. Okay, translate this. I said, you're welcome. And you're welcome is, to say you're welcome, it's, you'd say ashtle. Ashtle, which means it's, it's nothing. Ashtle, it's nothing. Okay, so now make, translate the whole sentence, which is, I said you're welcome. Okay, like, not like you're being rude, but someone said, oh, what did you say? I, I didn't hear you. I said, I'm wel you're welcome. It'd be, you would use, so would you use ihtoa or ihlia? You would use ihtoa. So, nikihtoa ashtle. I say it's nothing. It, make it past tense to say I said. So, we'd say nikihtoki ashtle. Nikihtoki ashtle. I said it's nothing. Nikihtoki ashtle. Okay, let's say, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk. Here in the Huasteca, you're going to want to say Saniloa. Saniloa. So now let's say, let's talk. And by the way, the Saniloa word is not transitive. So you're not saying Nik Saniloa Nahuatl to say I speak Nahuatl. You say Ni Saniloa Nahuatl. Okay, so you, Nahuatl is not an object here, just so you know in this. When you're using the word Saniloa. So let's talk, you'd say Ma Tisanilokan. Ma Tisanilokan. Okay, how would you say I speak Nahuatl? I speak Nahuatl. Okay, think about it. There's three ways. You could say Nitlahtoa Nahuatl. Nisaniloa Nahuatl. Ni Nahuati. And in the right context, Ni Kamati Nahuatl. I speak Nahuatl. How would you say, I told her yes. I told her yes. Okay, like someone says, hey, so-and-so said that uh, you told her she couldn't grab the spoon or something, I don't know. And you say, oh, well, I told her yes. I told her it was okay. So how would you say that sentence? I told her yes. You would use ichlia, ichlia. So nik ichlia, nik ichlia, I tell her. Now we want to say, I told her, nik ichlihki. Or simplify to nikilih. Nikilih, I told her. Nikilih kena. Nikilih kena. I told her yes. I told her yes. Nikilih kena. Okay, and that's the three things we've talked about in this video. We'll see you all next time. Tlaskamati.